Hey everybody, it's day two of our basic course. Are you excited? Because I'm excited to do this layout today, especially since we get to try out mosaic elements. So that should be a lot of fun. So we are going to be focused a little bit more on the grid die today. All right, so my two patterns today is on the left, I have pattern number 313. And on the right, I have pattern number 406. Just like yesterday, the left pattern is symmetrical and the right pattern is a pinwheel. So definitely look it up on your computer or print them out. As you can see, they both have mosaic elements. So we can try that out today. They also both have set A and set B incorporated. So again, I like to choose two patterns that both have similar elements with each other. So they make a co nice co one co cohesive two page spread. All right, so bringing the patterns back. <laughs> uh, as you can see from the colors, we need sets A, B, and C, the blue, purple, and pink sets along with the grid die, which we are going to be using this on our photos. Here I have photos of a collage. So I would choose photos that are mosaic friendly. So avoid anything with people or architecture or complex things. I also have this flower photo, which something like flowers would work as well, which I actually highly recommend using flowers because it's pretty easy. If you don't have any mosaic friendly photos, you can use pattern paper for today, but I highly recommend if you do have the photos, let's try them out. And if not, you can come back another time and use the photos. But don't worry, again, if you don't have photos, you can get pattern paper for today. All right, all my photos are four by six, as you can see here. And the grid paper I have is 12 by 12 sapphire. And I chose it because there is a little bit of the color in the mosaic photo. I'm going, well, I'm going to cut into mosaic. And those photos stood out on this grid paper. So choose a grid paper where the mosaic photo can stand out. Also have this purplish cardstock and pattern paper. Um, it's pretty much the goal for today is having the mosaic pe pieces stand out. So choose papers and colors where the mosaic's going to shine. All right, so take your time, gather up your materials and your photos, and then we'll get started making our two page spread. So just like yesterday, I like to start with the biggest dies first. This die is the biggest one from set B. It is four by six squares or it covers four by six squares on the grid paper. And so again, I like to put the die right up because I don't like to waste paper. I put it right up to the edge and then I cut as little as possible around it. Right? And just so you know, the sandwich for my die machine is I have a magnetic plate, a plastic plate, then I have the die facing up, then the paper, and then another plastic plate on top, which you might be able to see that plastic plate's pretty used up. So generally, I like to have a plate that never gets cut on, so it'll stay flat. As you can see, the blue plate there. All right, so that was this piece for our left side of the page. And now I'm going to put this one away. Get rid of that. <laughs> and now I'm going to use uh, or cut this die from set C. This is the five by four die from the set. Okay. All righty. I'm trying to get other. All right. So I'm going to be using or excuse me. I'm going to be cutting with the same color. Most of the mats I'm doing today are going to be cut with this pattern paper, except for a couple of them. I decided to mainly stick with one color today because the mosaic pieces, I actually want them to stand out more and I didn't want too many colored mats because it might look too busy with the mosaic elements. So keep that in mind. You have to figure out which parts you would rather shine more. And usually with the mosaic, people want that to stand out more. So I kept my mats more simple for today's two-page spread. All right, 
there's the first piece of that. This is a really pretty marble paper from Basic Gray, who sadly are not around anymore. <laughs> we stocked up on tons of their papers, and I still use them even now. All right, and again, you may be able to see I'm putting my die in at an angle, which I did talk about the reason yesterday, and hopefully you found that you do get a better, cleaner cut versus if you put the die just straight into the machine. All right, now I'm going to do the center square. I will not be cutting mats for these purple pieces, which that is an option if you want to do that, but my photos... They were a little bit too big to for the layering dies, so I'm going to be cutting the photos to grid size. But right now, I have this 4x4 die from set A. All right, again, using the same pattern paper. And I'm, again, lined it up on the edge or one of the corners here, and I'm going to cut around the paper. All right, just take your time as you're cutting around the die to make sure. Sometimes I'll accidentally cut and then <laughs> and my paper's too small for the die. <laughs> so try to pay attention and be careful. All right, now I have all those pieces with that pattern paper anyway. But now I'm going to make these two smaller square dies. All right. So I'm putting the 4x4 four four one away and grabbing the one that's a little smaller, the 3x3 three three square die. And again, you can look at the bottom of the pattern to see the measurements. So this die measures three and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm getting my paper here. This is sort of a, I guess it's a bluish purple. It's called indigo. All right, and again, I'm just using, I'm just cutting out this whole thing because I'm going to be using the die again on that same paper. All right, after cutting it, then you can put it on the machine, and you can really see here that I have that die at an angle because it's smaller. It is trickier to put the bigger dies at an angle, and for that, I just say do your best. Some of them are so big, you hardly can get it to go at an angle, but. That's why the smaller ones are nice because you can really get them in there properly. All right, I'm gonna do this for the second time. Hope you guys are more comfortable with the die machine today. It's pretty straightforward with the basic dies. All right, got the second piece cut and now we can add them to our grid paper. All right, I have my materials gathered here, including my 12 by 12 sapphire blue grid paper, which I love. Now, some of you have a difficult time figuring out the placement of each element when you're looking at the pattern. So I know this big block goes in the center and I also need to count the three one inch squares. So I know it's four squares over on either side actually, but from the right, it's uh, four squares over. All right, so I'm going to add my glue. This is repositional glue, by the way. It's the Hermodato dispenser. So I'm gluing my block on the grid paper. So I know from the pattern it goes at the very top, and then it's four squares over from the right is where I line it up. All right, the two bottom ones are pretty clear where they need to go because they cover the entire bottom section. So I just lined this one up on the left. And then the next one I'm going to put right next to it. So these two are probably a lot more straightforward. All right, next I'm going to add these two squares, but I know there's a row of one inch squares above the big blocks on the bottom. So again, I'm going to add my glue in each corner in the center, and I know where to put the square. I know I don't put it right above the big blocks on the bottom because there's a row of one inch squares that needs to go in between the rectangles and the squares. The next one you can kind of just see it's right across from the other one and the left side is finished except for the photos. And on the right side, 
I know the square goes in the center, but it might be tricky to know exactly where the center is. So I see that it's, there's three mosaic squares and then that one, the big block's three across. So I go count the four one, one inch squares on the grid and then I know it's down four squares. So that top right corner goes down four squares on the grid paper and four across from the right side of the page. Okay, and take your time. You wanna make sure all the grid lines are covered. Again, you line it up in the on the right corner and then line it up on the, or excuse me, on the left, I'm sorry. I told you I didn't know my left from my right, so sorry, from the left. Anyway, so I got these big blocks done. I'm going to be adding my photo here. All right, so as you can see, just like yesterday, this spot, you don't need to crop your photo or trim it any smaller. It fits right in. I just make sure the two sides and the top margins are equal. And obviously on the bottom, I have a little more space, but you can add some journaling there. All right, so I got my first photo down and now we need to crop the rest of them. Okay, so I'm going to be cropping those purple spaces into photos and I won't be using mats. All right, again, I'm going to be using the layering dies, but real quick, again, I'm using the crease pad like I did yesterday to help me get that smoother edge rather than the embossed edge. All right, so now I'm going to... So we use the die that fits the grid and now we're going to use the layering die, which is slightly smaller. So when you compare it, it's just, when you layer the dies, you just take the one that's slightly smaller than the one that fits the grid and you can actually put the die over your page and see, yeah, this is the right layering die because that fits perfectly into that right, into the <laughs> rectangle. Okay. So that's an easy way to check to make sure you've got the right layering die. All right, and this die goes right up to the edge on the bottom and top of this four by six photo. So I am definitely going to use washi tape. If you don't have washi tape specifically, there are other tapes out there and I believe there's some that are specifically for using with dies. Basically, you want to make sure this tape is easy to peel up when you're done. All right, I'm just checking the back to make sure. I like to flip it over and check the back to make sure that the uh, blade part isn't sticking out from the photo because obviously you want the blade part to cut into it. So I just make sure the photo is covering it up completely so I don't get a bad cut. All right, has a smooth edge because the crease pad and got my first photo cut. I'm going to do this second photo. Again, just take your time placing the die over the part of the photo you want to crop, especially with these bigger layering dies because they go right up to the edge of your four by six photo. So take your time. And then when you found the right spot, you put your washi tape on. And again, I do not put the, I do not have the sticky part of the washi tape on the photo I'm going to use on the page because I might leave a residue or even tear your photograph. And also with the photos, I also put them in at an angle. Pretty much I do that with every die I use, no matter if it's paper or photos. All right, we got that second one cut. So... That'll fill those two spaces on the left side of the page. All right, now I'm going to use a layering die that fits this four by four square. So I'm going to choose the layering die. And again, I'm gonna grab my page here. It does fit within the square on this page. So I'm gonna use this one for my photograph. So. This is the center or the focal point of the right page. So I suggest choosing a photo that stands out to you, like your favorite photo or one you think is particularly good. 
a lot of times I like to use a portrait of someone like this. In this case, that is what I'm doing. A lot of times I like to show the people as the focal point. Not every time, but a lot of times I do. And again, I just check the back to make sure the, bl the photo is covering the blade and the blade isn't sticking out from the photo because that means it would not actually cut through your photo. So double check that. All right, now we got our square photo or our focal point for the pinwheel pattern. Now I'm going to use a layering dies for these three by three squares. And just note, this layer die is pretty small. So make sure that you choose photographs where the subject is in the distance, or if it is a large subject like this, this tree is pretty big, but I'm okay with cropping it down really small. It kind of has an, I call it artsy, kind of an interesting look when you crop something bigger. But if you have something like a portrait, you may not want to do that so you can save that for a different page so if there is people in it I usually make sure they're in the distance or their heads crop small enough it fits within that space so just a little bit of design advice there all right I'm just trying to decide where I want to crop this photo and I decided and you may have noticed I didn't use washi tape this time because it wasn't right up on the edge, so I wasn't really that worried about it not cutting right or something. Alrighty, I got those two done, so I can put that die away. And now I'm going to cut the dies with these pieces. These are from set B and they measure three and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I am going to use the die that fits the grid. And again, if you would like to mat your photographs, you can cut your mats first and then use the layering die to cut your photos. But the subject of my photographs were just too big for the layering die. So I decided to go without the mats on this one. All right, just take your time. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to crop this photo. And if you need to use washi tape, please use it. I I don't always use washi tape because it's just an extra step and I'm pretty confident with the dyes at this point, but please use washi tape if you do not feel that way yet. The worst thing I hate is messing up on something and you have to reprint the photo or you can't use it. So please use washi tape if you need it. <laughs> All right, I'm just taking my time. As you can see, the subjects of these photos are pretty big and they fill the space of the die size. So I have that one. So for these will go on the right pinwheel pattern. So you will need two photos that are vertical and another two that are horizontal. That's part of the reason why I like pinwheel patterns is because they fit both vertical and horizontal kind of have a little more flexibility with the pinwheel patterns and they add some interest to your two page spread all right here's the last one in case you're wondering these pictures were from disney's california adventure theme park right next to disneyland and these photos were actually taken way back in 2007 <laughs> so yeah, so for a little while, you're going to see me use a lot of these Disney photos because I have never actually scrapped with them before. So this was a great opportunity to get these pages done. All right, got the finish. Now I can add them to my layout. I'm just placing the photos on the spots where I want them to go. Putting these two squares in those spots. This one in the middle. See, now I know where I'm going to place all my photos. And again, I do pay attention to which way the subjects are facing. We want them to face inside the page and not outside like that tree. I kind of preferred that tree was facing, kind of faces towards the right. So that's what I did. The sun is facing towards the right. So that's why I put it there rather than up in the right corner. Now the bear's a little bit of an exception, but it is still, um, the Pacific War sign is pointed towards 
the left, but and the bear is too, so it's not facing the rest of the pinwheel pattern, but I can get away with the bear one because it's still facing towards the other layout. So if I had the bear on the left page, it would look funny to me, but because it's on the right, it's still facing towards the layout. So you can get away with it there. It doesn't necessarily have to... I mean, in this case, I didn't really have a photo that could fit that in the in that same spot that faced towards the right. So figured, well, at least it's still facing towards the other page and still bringing in attention to that one. So that's where you can kind of get away with it. Just mainly the rule is make sure it's not facing away from the entire layout. So I hope that makes sense. Adding on to the <laughs> design device ad advice from yesterday. All right, just take your time. I just, again, like to eyeball where I place the photos in the center. So over here, I'm putting the glue in each corner in the center and then carefully just taking my time, making sure all the margins around the photo are equal. And these ones are actually, the photo I just glued is gonna be a little easier because I'm lining it right up on the grid. So it'll just cover the grid lines. All right, matting my glue and take your time lining up on the grid. I put it up in the left corner and then making sure the top and side lines are covered. So you can see I kind of had to readjust it there and that totally happens. Sometimes, you know, I like to take a step back after I'm done with the page and look and see if anything's crooked or if any of the lines are showing. So with the repositional glue, you can always readjust as needed. Right, now I have my last photo and I hope you're on your last photo too. If not, that's okay. You can always pause the video whenever you need to. All right, I got this lined up. Mm, yeah, I got some sticky stuff <laughs> that I like to get off. All right, yeah, I'm just cleaning off my page. If you get some extra glue or pieces of paper on there, I like to wipe it off real quick. But anyway, now we get to add the mosaic part, so pay attention to this one. All right, get out your grid die. You will also want washi tape or similar tape, so definitely get some tape out. You know, I will be using this photo for the left side of my layout. I recommend using a photo so you can get some practice, but if you don't have a mosaic-friendly one, please use some pattern paper. So a four by six photo is going to be very tight on this die. So I carefully and take your time. I put the left corner in the inset right up to the edge of the blade here. So don't put it on top of the blade, just put it next to it. So the photo should be on the inside part of the blade and not on the outside part at all, if that makes sense. And you will want to use tape to put it down because otherwise it will definitely shift in the machine all right so take your time on this one so now you're going to roll it in the machine so I'm just checking to make sure my photo is still straight and it is tricky uh, so I decided and I recommend using a second piece of tape to put into put onto the opposite corner Really want to make sure this photo doesn't shift because it is, like I said, a very tight cut. It barely fits on the 4x6 die. Alright, going to carefully roll it through your machine. And again, I'm using the crease pad so my photograph doesn't get those embossed edges. All right, and I'm just gonna carefully peel the tape off. And yes, you will see your photos are all stuck together and that is intentional so you don't lose your pieces so easily. So yes, it did cut through except for the little tab parts. And for me, every time I cut with this die, I always have some, I'm pulling off some extra photograph here. <laughs> well, it's not really extra photograph, it just, didn't quite fit perfectly in the die and so usually I have to take off some of the edges but I find that it might be a little bit shorter than one inch 
but it still seems to look okay when I put it on my grid paper. So it may not be a full one inch, but it's still very close that I haven't been able to tell a significant difference so far. All right, the nice thing about having all the squares together is you can glue them all very easily. So I'm using my glue and I'm just gonna put a line along each strip basically. So that way when you put it on the grid paper, you don't have to sit there and glue each square individually. It's already done for you. All right, now we got this part done and now we can add it to our grid paper. All right, so I'm actually gonna put my photograph on both sides and yes, you do have enough squares to fill in the space. Notice that your photo goes six squares across and there's six squares here. So a lot of people look at our page and say, my photo isn't big enough to expand across that, but it's a little mosaic moments magic, <laughs> I think. It always looks like it. The fo uh, on the page, the photos seem way bigger, but in reality, it actually might have been filled up by one, maybe two photographs. All right, so when you, you take off your one-inch squares, and they do have little tabs, and if they bother you, you can use scissors to cut them off. And then, of course, you carefully line them up on your grid paper. So I take it off, and then line it up in that left corner, and make sure I cover that top and left line. And got our first row here. And do take your time. All right, I'm going to use that second half of the same line to fill in the other side. And again, I'm just carefully, uh, I kind of rubbed that tab. Let's see, I'm going to cut that off with scissors. That tab seemed particularly big, so I decided to cut it off. All right, and line it up carefully, and I'm going to do the same thing with this last photograph or photo piece. All right, got the first row done. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> now we're going to peel. I'm just going to rip off the second row of my photo. And... That tab looks very big as well, so I'm gonna cut that off with scissors. Sorry, the camera looked a little blurry there. All right, so I'm gonna carefully line up, and I do like my photographs to be lined up, so please take your time and pay attention to make sure, especially with a subject like mine. If you had something like flowers and they get kind of mixed up on your mosaic, it probably would still look okay, but mine has more intricate details like this collage, this part of the collage clearly was uh, looks like San Francisco and so the photo has these house designs and so I definitely want to make sure my mosaic is lined up. And again, take your time. Sometimes the one inch squares get very crooked but You can always look back later and fix them. All right, I'm just gonna discard the bottom row because I do not need it for my page. But for this row, I'm gonna add it right underneath the square, the bigger square, I mean. I still kind of want it to line up with the two top rows on the top of my page. I just love the color <laughs> on these on this photograph. That's why I chose it partially for my mosaic because it had such amazing colors in it. I don't even know if this wall is in California Adventure anymore. So it's nice to have scrapbooking because, you know, things change. Anyway, I'm putting on my last piece and there you go. Our first mosaic and we did it together. All right, do you feel good? And if you're not finished, take your time. Pause the video if you need to. It looks really cool. I love the mosaic look. All right, we got this page done and now we need to do the right layout. Just like last time, I chose a horizontal photo again. 
So I'm just going to show the page real quick. I'm for on this photo is going to cover these two spaces that I just pointed out. All right, so we're going to be cutting another photo. So take your time. If you need to pause the video at any moment or rewind, please do so. So again, I'm going to line my photo. Basically, I'm going to put it inside the die. So don't put it right on the blade or outside of the blade. Just put it kind of inside the blade part, at least on one corner. So on the left and top, I made sure the photo was lined up on the inside of the blade. The other two sides might go right on the blade and that's okay. All right, and make sure you have tape to cover your two corners. And again, I'm going to cut or put this in the machine. Whoops, my tape kind of fell off there. So you may want to bend your tape so it covers the front of the die as well to make sure it securely stays on. Just a tip there. <laughs> and the nice thing about this die is you can see where it's going to cut on your photograph which in this case, I am cutting my entire photograph, but there may be times where you only want to cut part of the photograph. All right, take your time as you roll it through. And we'll take that plastic plate up. And again, I'm going to take off my washi tape really carefully here. Okay, and I'm pulling it off the die. And then again, I didn't make a perfect cut, but it's okay. You notice just like a teeny bit of the photo is coming off here. And like I said, for me, I think it looks fine. So it's okay if you didn't get it perfectly there. All right, I'm just going to cut off. I had a tab there and just grab my scissors to get that off. And now I'm going to add tape on the back. First, I need to get this washi tape off. I don't know, maybe you could leave it on there, but <laughs> if anyone's tried that, let me know. But I don't know how well the glue would stick. Anyways, use your repositionable glue. And I love doing this because it's so much, you know, the glue's already on there. So when you put it on the grid paper, that part's done. So it's easy to just rip them up and add them to your page. You can see the lines of glue there. All right, I'm gonna fill in the left and right s spots on my pinwheel pattern. And I'm just gonna use the middle of my photograph. So I'm just taking off the top and bottom rows, but you can pick whichever parts you would like for your page. I just ripped them in half and that way I know, all right, it's easy to know which sections I'm putting these squares in. All right, again, take your time, line up the square and the left corner of each line and make sure the top and left lines are covered. And if you are a beginner, I do recommend really taking your time and, you know, look at this as practice for lining it up, if, especially if it's your first time. And like I said, you can look over your page again when you're done and check to see if any squares need to be fixed. All right, so I did the left side and now I get to do the right side. All right. So if this is your first time doing some mosaic work, let me know in the comments below if this was easier or more difficult than you thought once you're done with your page. <laughs> you know, let me know how this went for you, but I do hope it's helpful to be able to watch me put this page together. All right, now we're going to fill in the top and bottom parts, and this is the photograph I'm going to be using. All right, we're going to be doing this for a third time, so I did this kind of on purpose, so that way you would get plenty of practice using the grid die. I needed to grab some tape there so I could be prepared. <laughs> so again, line up your photo so it's on the inside of the blade. And as you can see, I'm putting my hand, oh, once I straighten out, I like to double check, but I'm using my hand 
to make sure my photo doesn't shift when I put my tape on. I didn't point that out earlier, but hopefully you noticed that when I was putting the tape on, I put my hand over the photo on the back of the photo so it wouldn't move. All right, and then I'm putting, I'm bending the glue over so it's on the die a little bit just so it'll stay on securely, but try not to put it on your photograph because it might leave a residue or even rip it. Alrighty, we're gonna be cutting our third mosaic photograph or paper if you are using paper. Just carefully put it into the machine and then roll it through. And yes, this die, if you, you probably heard already that it makes a lot of cranky noises. <laughs> And I'm just carefully peeling my washi tape. Alrighty. Just getting the rest of this off on the corner. Just take your time. I just don't want my photos to rip apart because I want them to stay together because it's just easier for me. I'm just taking off the pieces. And then cutting the tabs off with my scissors. All right, so this photograph is finished. And now we get to glue the back like we did with the other two photographs. And it's really quick to just swipe each part of the photo. And now it's ready to be glued onto our grid paper. Now we are going to fill in the top and bottom spaces. So, Basically, you want to choose the parts of the photograph you want. And yes, this is a horizontal photograph, but there's still... I need six squares to fill in this whole space, and I'm just choosing where I want that. So I'm going to take off this... Get rid of all the excess part I don't really need, and I'm going to use this part of my photograph to fill in that space. And I'm deciding what part I want to use for the bottom. Again, I'm just ripping off the parts I don't want. And I'm placing that, <laughs> the part you just saw at the bottom. Alright. I know sometimes the squares do rip a party anyway before you're ready to put them on the page, but that's okay. At least this time we don't have tons of pieces to worry about. And again, just take your time and making sure you pay attention and line up your photo so it looks correct. So here I might look a little funny if part of my hot air balloon was at the bottom. <laughs> All right, I'm going to now fill in this bottom mosaic portion take your time. Hopefully at this point you're getting the hang of filling in the mosaic squares. Alrighty, I'm going to put this one on carefully. Again, line it up right into that corner and make sure the line is completely covered when you are finished. Alrighty, lining this. Okay, so... <laughs> I think I had a slight mix up here, which can totally happen. <laughs> now I can't remember which way this went. All right. No, that doesn't look right. Yeah, see, this is why you need to pay attention. But I realized that piece I put on the right looks like the bottom of the hot air balloon. All right. Yeah, now this is making more sense. <laughs> I figured it out. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> All right, so now that part is done. All right, so once you are finished, your completed page should look like this one. And now your entire page is actually finished. All right, so this completes day two of our course. If you are finishing up, that's okay. Please pause and rewind, rewind the video as much as you need to. There's no rush. And that's what's nice about YouTube videos is 
You don't have to rush to finish. You can take your time and I'm just here as your guide. All right, so I hope you have fun and learned a lot about the grid die. I hope your mosaic turned out beautifully, which I'm sure it did. So anyway, tomorrow you may want to use a 2x2 two two or 1x3 decorative die. So we are going to use the learn or we are going to be using a couple of decorative dies tomorrow. So grab those. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you tomorrow.